Welcome to this Calendly tutorial. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to create a group event. Now we have one user that we want to create this event for named Charles. So let's just explain a bit how group events work. Let's say Charles wants to meet people in groups of five at a particular slot. Let's say he wants to meet five people for the first 30 minutes of the day. Probably he starts at 10 o'clock. Then he wants to meet the next group of people at 10.30. So the system allows him to do that in 30-minute intervals. Say five people in the first 30-minute interval and the next five people in the next 30-minute interval. So how to create that? On your home page, you will notice that there is a button called New Event Type. When you click it, it's going to give you different types of events. In this video, we are going to talk about the group event. So we click Create. Now, under this section, you will notice that there is an event name. Let's just say this is a 30-minute demo with the customer. There is the location. Now, we have said that Charles wants to meet these people in person. There are other options to meet them over Zoom or on Microsoft Teams. You can actually also call them. But the most appropriate right now is an in-person meeting. So. He puts that there. Let's just say he's found at 23 Carlsville Road. Then we update that information. So on the booking page, they will notice that there will be this location provided. Let's say he wants to inform them that he has already paid parking for them. So he can write, please. Proceed to parking in level it has been paid for already. After this, we go to the event link. Usually, the event link is named after the event name. In this instance, the system is filled in it for us. The next part says maximum invitees in a spot. So we say that he is going to do 30 minute intervals and he wants five people only to book or to fill those spots. We can just choose a different color so that we can differentiate the events. And we click next. Under this section, we are going to see when can people book this event. So the first section is the event duration, which is 30 minutes. Now, Charles wants these events probably to roll over 30 days. Remember, there are other options which are available here. You can actually choose a date range to say from January 1 to January 30 is when I want people to book. You can also say indefinitely people can book up until next year. But right now, we're going to limit it to 30 days into the future where so we click apply the next section is the event time zone so for us to make a customization we have to click edit so there are two types of time zone styles there's a local time zone style and a locked time zone style so if we use a local time zone style what this means is that the invitees will see your availability in that time zone so we usually use this for virtual meeting. However, there's this second type of time zone style where you have to lock to a specific time zone. Usually this is more recommended in a in-person meeting. So you can actually choose from a list of time zones depending on which part of the world you live in. So for now, we're going to use the local time zone. 
Now, under the availability section, this is where you set your available hours when people can schedule meetings with you. So as you can see, Monday, it starts from 9 a.m. to uh, to 5 p.m., which is 1,700 hours. Let's just say we want to change Mondays only. Let's say he wants to start at 8 o'clock on Mondays up to 3 o'clock, which is 1,500. Remember, you can actually change how the uh, time functions here. You can actually uh, put it so that it says a.m. and p.m. There are settings for that, and I'm sure I'm going to do a video on that as well. So after doing this, you can actually add another interval. Let's say there's a break at a specific time. Let's say, just for example, um, he has a break at uh, 12, uh, 11. Then he starts at 12, um, 100 hours, um, and finishes at 1,500 hours. So you'll notice that there is a break in between. That's how you add breaks. I am unavailable is, a, is actually uh, a, a part of the software that you can use to block out certain dates and the holidays. So we use this part to do that. So we're going to apply to all the Mondays. So you notice that all the Mondays in the calendar will have this particular scheduling for Charles. Now, the advanced section is also important. Here we set the availability increment so you'll notice that on a scheduling page the slots are available in increments of 30 minutes 10 30 11 30 12 30 1300 1330 and something like that then the event max per day so we use this to limit the number of events that can be scheduled per day let's say we want just um five slots per day then also the minimum scheduling notice is a very important part of the setting because it might happen that a person can just schedule an hour before and you can't make it to the meeting. So it's always nice to always put uh, a, 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 actually more time before a person can actually uh, schedule with you. So after you finish your meeting and before you finish a meeting, you can actually put buffers so that you have enough time to prepare for the next meeting. Let's say a buffer after a meeting is ended is like five minutes. It gives you enough time to prepare for the next meeting that's coming through. This button helps you to hide an event or make it visible in the main calendar page. So we're just going to leave it as it is. So in this tutorial, we are only going to talk about the first two sections. What event is this and when can people book this event? This is how we set up group events.